All right, back at it working on this thing. Uh, where we last left it off, we removed uh, almost everything. The uh, There's a few plastic bits in here I didn't show removing, but there was like some plastic trim pits that fit um, oh, here. Yeah. There we go. There were these things, kind of double-sided taped, like on there, and they just pull off easy enough, and, and they go in the pile. Um, Last we looked at this thing, I was uh, I was thinking it was soldered together in kind of like a sealed unit, but I, I don't think it is. I've been looking closer at this, and I think it all just probably pops together, or pops together. Yeah, I, I think it just fits together on those little, um, it's probably a, a, a bump rather than like a blob of solder or something. So I think I'm going to take this out um, first, and then we can start fitting... Um, the adapter pieces on here that we're going to use to turn this into a standard ATX case. So let me let me get at that. So, like I said, looking at this thing, let me zoom in. So, I think it's just going to come apart if I fit a screwdriver or a pry bar into it. In fact, I'm pretty sure it is. Why don't I get that into the frame? You have to excuse the shaking cam, but I don't have a, oh, hey, yeah, that's enough. I don't have a tripod I can fit inside of this. So, okay, cool. There's some screws in there and this whole thing probably comes out of there. Uh, that's the button we want to save and it's got, uh, let's see, it doesn't look like it's part of the PCB. So that's gonna help. Let me let me pull those screws out of there and pop this thing out of there. All right, I got the screws out. So okay, well it doesn't just pop off of it. Does a PCB come out of there? Okay, the PCB will come out. Probably should have popped that <laughs> little connector out of there for the power button first, but um. Yeah, no big deal. Let me let me do that now. I'm gonna need another hand. Okay, got yeah, got it out. No problems. No uh, no damage. So that can go into the pile. And then we have to get rid of this metal shroud on here. That absolutely might be soldered down though. Maybe I can break that loose without harming anything. Let me see. Okay, yeah, that shroud came out with not much issue at all. All I did is rock it back and forth and it broke. I think it was just glued on there. I don't think there was any solder or anything. That's kind of gross looking. Ew. There we go. It's like rust or something? Something spilled in there, something got wet. Anyways, doesn't matter. It's out. Parts in the pile. And then this one here, power button. You have three wires going to it. I believe, I believe they're labeled. Hmm. Can't tell. Anyways, uh, one's going to be for the LED, and I'm sure they're all going to share a common ground. So, we probably have an LED positive, a switch positive, and then a shared ground. I'm going to look that up and make sure it's right. I don't want to fry it out, because it doesn't look like it changes out of there too easily. Yeah, so. Alright, cool. Progress. So, next up, and you can see that I've already marked it out, but we're going to use our um, new back plate as a stencil to figure out what we're going to cut out here and the way it fits it's going to mount and i've marked them with little dashes uh, to existing holes in the in the mesh and these 
the 120 millimeter fan mounts directly to this uh, plate and I don't want it to sit kind of crooked or anything like that. I want it to be true and flush. Um, the instructions say you only have to cut out as much material as, I mean, they basically show just a small hole here and then the cut here. But when you look from the inside, you're going to be able to see this material here. It's not cut. You know, this is still going to be there. And I, I don't want it to look ugly like that. So I'm going to take out probably the maximum amount of material um, that you can and still put this on there and cover everything up. So we're going to come all the way down and you can kind of see faintly because I, I traced it in pencil. This is going to be the edge of our um, back plate and then the black line is going to be where I'm going to cut. So it's going to be a very fine, um, very fine line between hidden and shown with this, but it all bolts together nice. So there shouldn't be any, once, once it's on there, there shouldn't be any issues with it moving around or um, revealing any cut edges. And on the inside, it should look really nice and clean. That's the plan at least. So I'm gonna drag this outside, as long as it's not snowing, and cut it out. And just like that, there is no going back. So I just used a cheap angle grinder. Um, with a thin cutoff wheel to uh, follow my black lines basically, leaving just enough meat and of course the uh, screw holes that I can put my back plate on. And like I said, this is more material than you need to, than you need to actually cut off. Um, like I said, you can follow the instructions, but I want a really clean look when you look inside of it, especially since I'm gonna put a window in the side panel. So next up, uh, why don't we put the panel on there and, excuse me, and then next we'll be probably putting in the motherboard tray. So let's do it. Got the back panel on there loose. Um, you just take these little M3 screws. Where, where am I looking at? Right here. With a little uh, matching M3 nut. Um, slide it through and screw it together. There's nylon in there. It's a lot nylon locking uh, nut. So once it's tight, it should never come loose. Um, I got it loose on here because uh, I just want to make sure and, and do a test fit first. Uh, other than that, um, you'll notice that there isn't any you know screws over here, and that's because our come on I/O um, adapter piece. Is going to go behind it like this and it pads off of your back plane uh, back plate with these they look like motherboard standoffs but basically they go on the back and they'll pad us out and give us the proper spacing we need to match our PCI uh, expansion ports so I'm gonna put that in there and then um, probably snug all of these up and that'll be it for the outside, and it will technically be, um, well, no, uh, <laughs> like 30% of the way done, because we still got to do our uh, power supply and motherboard backplate. So, see you in a minute. Before we, stick, before we stick this into the computer, I was looking back here, and the mounting surface is going to go, you know, through the original metal of the case, but over here, that... This metal here doesn't exist, so it would sit in there, you know, cockeyed like that. So I'm going to use a couple of these, and I don't know if this is what they're for, but I'm going to stack two of these up, and then I'll have, you know, two stack washer here, or no, here, here, and here, so that hopefully that um, I/O plate adapter, or whatever you want to call it, uh, sits straight and hopefully lines up as good as it can. Yeah, it's, uh, it's coming out nice. I, I do like the fact that I cut out all the material and it's a clean look back here. We don't have any metal protruding up anywhere. We don't have weird cuts or anything like that. Now, before I put these final screws in here, um, what I was talking about, how we're not gonna be on a level plane. So you can see back here, the base of this uh, extender 
is against the perforated holes of the original case, whereas the metal from the original case doesn't exist over here. So if you draw this tight, you see how it sits off of the case there. I'm going to do away with that with just a couple of spacers, you know, just a couple of uh, couple of washers used as shims, and that should take care of any issue that that would cause. In order to get our motherboard in there and, uh, and have it sit flush, because um, we're going to use some of these to hold it up, I do believe. Anyways, we have to remove the weird ones, and what I'm talking about are... Uh, the ones with the balls on the, you know, instead of this threaded boss here, we have to remove all these standoffs with this um, metal ball on the top. And there's only a handful of them. We have one here, 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 there, and yeah, right here. So I don't think these thread on here. I think they're kind of a cast piece or a milled piece that was a uh, pressure. Um, like you can see a very small uh, hexagon. So I, I think this is this is one piece and I'm gonna try spinning it out of there. I don't, I don't think it will. Uh, my other idea is I'm gonna take it and just kind of like back and forth and pop it out of there because any kind of mess it leaves behind there will be covered up. So let me see if I can unthread it. No, it definitely doesn't unthread so I'm gonna try grabbing on it. Let me see here. Just these pliers. There we go. Oh, yeah. Hey, look at that. That came. That came out of there easily. Come on, focus. There we go. Yeah, that came out really easy and cleanly. Nice. I'm gonna do that to the rest of them. All right, I just got finished removing all of those stands. Whoa, hey, yo. And I wanna fit the motherboard tray in there. And the white that's on there is just a, there's a protective film on it. Um, so in order to fit this in here, some of these um, the standoffs are located in the right spot. And some of them, you can see, uh, there's no provision in this motherboard tray for them. So we're gonna have to do the same thing to The ones that aren't gonna work that we just did uh, I've, I've already taken the time to circle them. Um, there's six of them And it seems like what we're gonna do is the same thing we did to those other stands that uh, I just removed We're just gonna grab them with the pliers and work it back and forth until it pops off and Then we should be able to fit the motherboard tray in here now, I thought the motherboard tray was gonna sit on these stands, but evidently not. We're gonna sit flat against the back of the, um, well, the case, rather, or uh, actually. Um, but yeah, that should, uh, this should be simple. I'll see you in a second. Okay, so the uh, motherboard uh, back plate, or whatever we call this thing, is sitting down flush. It has a little bit of like leeway cut for the pegs so that you can slide the motherboard tray you know left and right it doesn't it actually fits kind of snug there we go so you can align exactly how it has to be um you know because i'm sure these are uh um you know, there's a little bit of variance, you know, plus or minus um, in the making of this board here. So that really is probably going to help. Um, and then I got to looking at these original standoffs versus the standoffs that the, the new tray uh, provides. And I was wondering if these are going to be too tall. It's kind of tough to, you know, eyeball it. So I broke out the calipers. I broke out the calipers. And here is one of the new standoffs. Come on, there we go. Really? It's off. All right, so I broke out the calipers and we have 8.86, 8.85 millimeters. And then we have for the 
Um, the original standoffs, they're only 5.92, so sh they should be out of the way. We shouldn't have to worry about cutting those down or anything like that. It should be zero interference. Yeah, six on that one, but I could be just crooked a little bit. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a oh, oh I'm gonna drop them. I am gonna throw my test motherboard in here. This is a motherboard that is no more. It has trouble focusing. There we go. We have some very messed up traces on this. So we are not worried about harming this thing. So <clears throat> just trying to line up our standoffs. There we go. I think those are all lined up pretty good. And then I'm going to throw a, a graphics card into it so I can lock it into this. And then we can put a couple of uh, screws into these. Why don't I point where I'm going? We can put a couple of screws into this and hold it down flat. And it will be, you know, aligned and good to go. Got the test motherboard in here. Um, everything lines up okay-ish. Um, some of them... Some of the standoffs aren't exactly centered in the you know middle of the hole, but I mean even on kind of expensive cases, sometimes they just don't line up. Not perfectly at least. Um, another thing I'm noticing is over here, the uh, outlet, or um, outlets, <laughs> the audio ports are very close to, don't fall, this is all balancing on my lap. The audio ports are very close to whatever you want to call this. So I'm going to see if there's enough movement in this entire thing to move it, you know, the plate and everything down, you know, a millimeter or so. Um, I'm not sure if there is, but I'm going to, I'm going to give it a try. Okay. Trying to get the, you know, the final adjustments done on this, uh, the layout here. Um, and I'm finding that although some pegs or standoffs have like one to two millimeters, of adjustment that I can keep you know moving left to right with some of them sit flush against you know the hole that was drilled for them so even though I have this more much more um, adjustment over here I don't have any I don't have any right here so we're kind of at the mercy of the board and, and it, everything's gonna work I believe I mean I think that one's the most off-center but it's not gonna hurt anything like I've, I've put cases together where um, you got to do some pretty heavy pushing against you know I'm flexing the metal and stuff to get the board to sit in there right so uh, yeah that one will work that's it, it is what it is the guy that makes these um, it's a quality product um, so I wouldn't put this uh, you know I wouldn't I wouldn't say that this is a a big negative it's not going to impact us in any way so yeah uh, we're going to keep going uh, i'm going to put uh, the locks on here and and the way that his instructions say to do it is he's got these three well he's got a lot of them but he says to use three of these um washers that he cut and again everything's got um paper on the back so you gotta peel that off but he says to stack three of them on here And then put a screw in it to hold it down. It's not the prettiest thing I've ever seen in my life. Maybe I can come up with a better way to do that. I don't know. I don't want to have to like cut these down with a Dremel and stuff like that. So up here it's going to work great. So up here, and you can't really see it, but this is, um, here we go. These are the um, threaded embosses that held the top shelf on and basically this sits over them and the screw is going to go through it and hold it all down and together. So 
the top will be very secure. And maybe I can, um, maybe I can come up with some, like I said, some other way other than stacking these washers here. We'll see. Now, okay, before I permanently affix the uh, motherboard tray into here, because it uses these three spots to hold the top of it on, we have to put that panel back up in here because the little lip will come, um, you know, around these, and then our uh, motherboard tray will sit over top of it, and then the screws will, you know, clamp everything down. So I did say I wanted to replace, and I've got it out already, but I wanted to replace this fan with a uh, Noctua. And I, I'm wondering if it's possible to put, you know, slide it in and then sort of like force it to spin into place. I'm hoping it is because I want to keep going on this. So if you were to put it in here like this, and of course the bottom's in there, I'm hoping you can just like, there's just enough room to force it like that. I suppose we'll find out when the time comes because I'm going to move forward with this and I hope I don't regret it. <laughs> so you absolutely can get a fan up inside of here. You don't have to fight it or anything, but since we use, or this uses, since it uses these little rubber, um, you know, they're not screws or they're just, you know, I don't know, pegs, I guess. Getting this on here, or getting a, a, a new fan onto here is going to be an exercise in um, patience, for real, for one. But I don't think it's going to be impossible. I just believe I'm going to swear at it off camera quite a bit and then be back and be like, Hey, I got it in. That wasn't so bad. It will be bad. Yep. Fiddling around with this thing and trying to put the motherboard in and messing with stuff. Um, securing the back plane down. I, I did what they said here. Three of those nylon or whatever these are washers plus the um, countersunk screw. I was doing it to this side and this one turns out to be much taller than this one which would be a problem. It's also where's my multimeter or um, calipers. It's taller than just my standard 9.48. Taller than the uh, the motherboard screw downs. 8.7. So that's 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 no good right there. There's no bueno. So I'm just gonna break that one off. I'm gonna grab the old pliers and break it off. Oh. I gotta take this out and break that off. Yay. So we're currently at a point where I can mount the motherboard in there, graphics card. Um, of course, these aren't the final parts that are going in here. Um, they don't even work. Um, but we got our back panel installed. And when you look inside the case, it doesn't look like it stands out. There's no, you know, extra metal popping around and stuff like that. Um, I'm really liking how this is coming out. The next couple of projects, I think, are going to be tackling the power supply conversion. If you remember, this thing is ridiculously large and doesn't use, you know, your standard ATX um, power leads. So we're going to change that. We also have to adapt our power button right here. Got to adapt the power button to your standard um, front panel header. And we're going to cut this section out because we want to install uh, USB 3.0 and audio headers. And I might as well, where, 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 where is it? Where is it? Oh, there it is. Got it. So. I have this thing here, and of course I'm not going to use it as is. I'm going to have to cut off material around the, um, the USB ports and stuff like that. But we're going to cut it and then fit it nicely into a similar size hole that we're going to cut here, and then blend it together. Um, it's probably going to 
need to be put into place with some like JB Weld and sanded and painted to match because of course it's black versus the uh, um, you know silver of the case. I also want to try and match the width of this flat part right here. So the, of course it's going to go a little bit lower than factory, but I do want it to look like it belongs on there. The only sort of downside is we're going to have this blue color in the USB 3.0 on the face of it. I could always color that in with like a silver Sharpie or something like that, but uh, that is what it is. And I, I think it's going to look great. Should be simple enough to um, build something to mount it inside of there with this um, using the existing screws. And if not, I can always add 3D print or, or just come up with something. I'm sure I will. Um, but yeah, overall, this is coming out fantastic. And I can't wait to build a system in here. Sorry, I'm just, um, yeah, just going, looking at things and, and going over things in my head. Um, anyways, yeah, so that, that'll do it for this one. Go ahead and leave it a thumbs up if you liked it. If you didn't like it, please uh, give it a thumbs down. Let me know in the comments if, um, like, you have any ideas on how I could better make this look uh, more, you know, un, unchanged. I, I know there are companies out there, this is rolling around on some screws. There are companies that make, uh, especially like, um, what's it called, Laser Hive. Um, they make a button out here, but it sits on the outside of it. It's a kind of a bulky thing, and I want this nice and flat. So I have a pretty good idea on how I'm going to use all this. But, you know, if, if, if you have a better idea, by all means, put it in the comments. Um, other than that, I thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next one.